Chapter 12. I bet you're thinking this story has a happy ending. Well, I'm here to tell you that you're wrong. When it comes to bitter ends, I'm pretty sure I'm about to reach one as bitter as they come. The beginning of the end started on a Saturday. That's when Libby and Bobby had the wedding. For those who don't know, a wedding is kind of like a dog park for humans. Basically, a bunch of humans get together and sit around in one place for a while, but then they go to another place where there are noms. Then, after they're done eating, everybody gets up and starts jumping around. After the wedding was the honeymoon. For those who don't know, a honeymoon is when I get to go stay with Toby for a whole entire week. I will admit that I miss Libby and Bobby quite a bit, but it was fun getting to play with Toby all day long. Just about the time I was really, really starting to miss Libby and Bobby, there they were. One quick ride in the car and we were back at the den. I didn't think life could get any better. Unfortunately, I was right. As soon as I walked in the door of the den, life got a whole lot worse. In the spot where my couch had been, there was a different couch. In the sleep room, my bed had been switched to a different bed. Everything in the den was different. My little couch, my rug, my chair, all different. Even the big glow box was different. It was bigger. The worst part was that everything, and I mean everything, smelled like the phantom stench. In a panic, I ran to the noms room. Thank goodness my noms bowl was still there. From the couch room, I heard Bobby calling out, Potato Chip, come on out, Potato Chip, where are you? I will admit, I was a bit annoyed Bobby was thinking about food while I was in a full-blown crisis mode. Couldn't he see the phantom stench had swooped into the den and replaced almost everything I owned? I'd failed in my primary job as protector of the den, and I didn't even see it coming. This was no time for food. Bobby had moved to the sleep room. Potato Chip, where'd you go? We've really got to get going. Libby was standing by the front door. We're going to be late for Janie and Derek's engagement party. Bobby came out of the sleep room and joined her. I was really hoping to introduce the two before we took off. He looked disappointed. It'll be fine. They'll have to figure it out eventually. Libby opened the door and they both walked out. I was glad Libby had confidence in me to figure it out eventually, but I needed to figure it out now. As soon as Libby and Bobby walked out the door, I went on the hunt. It was hard to pick up the trail considering the phantom stench was everywhere, but with a little focus, I managed to track down the strongest scent trail of them all. It started at my water bowl, went up on top of the counter, on top of the fridge, leaped from the fridge to the table, down onto the chair, across the couch room to the back of the couch, and into the sleep room. As I approached the sleep room, I could tell I was getting close. Up until now, the smell had always been secondhand. Whatever it was coming from was somewhere inside the sleep room. Nose to the ground, I prepared my fangs and followed the scent. It led directly into the closet where Libby kept all her clothes. Sensing a trap, I approached with caution. Very carefully, I inched my nose around the door of the closet, when all of a sudden, from behind me came a terrifying hiss. It was at that exact moment I knew I was a goner. It was as if the devil of the forest himself had come to collect my soul. With a howl and a yelp, I tucked my tail between my legs and dove headfirst into the closet. It was a move driven purely by instinct, and in a stroke of sheer luck, the move also managed to slide the closet door shut behind me. I was safe, but I was trapped. Less than a second later, there was a thunderous thump on the door and another hiss. You'd better get out of my den if you know what's good for you. I tried to sound as intimidating as possible. Tough words coming from a dog hiding in a closet. The voice was cold and feminine. The devil was a female. I'm not hiding. I, uh, this is where I take my naps. I'm just going to lay down and take a nap. That's how not scared I am of you. Without warning, the door thumped and the devil hissed again. I tried to hold it in, but another yelp escaped my mouth. I see, not scared at all. I sniffed the air for any clues as to the identity of the monster, but there was nothing but the phantom stench. Who are you anyway, and what are you doing in my den? I'm the great and powerful potato chip, and this is no longer your den. It is my lair. Well, we'll see about that. When Libby and Bobby get back, they're going to put you right outside. You'll be begging to get back in. I borked and growled at the same time, but the beast was going nowhere. Libby and Bobby aren't coming back. I am Bobby's master, and he does my bidding. Right now, my bidding is for him to not come back until you're gone, one way or another. In that moment, it all became clear. Bobby was under the spell of the phantom stench, er, 
of potato chip. He couldn't help it. This whole time she'd been controlling him so that she could move in and take my den. It all made perfect sense. I'd crack the case if only I'd figured it out sooner. Well, I'm not going anywhere. My tone was defiant. Then I guess you'll just die in there. Watch it. If you're not careful, I'm going to have to show you my fangs. Then maybe I'll have to show you my claws. Again, the door thumped and Potato Chip hissed and I yelped. Fine mess you've gotten yourself into this time, Henry, I thought to myself. Now what?